greetings and welcome back for week six of our series, uh, Growing Disciples. Today in this series, we're talking about uh, living a life of service and how important that is to our lives as a follower of Jesus. Yes, um, recently I was, um, I was invited to go to uh, USM to assist with uh, a memorial service. Um, there was a person who had passed away who was employed by the university at the physical plant. And um, I guess because I was sort of the preacher on campus, uh, I got invited to be a part of that. And um, the gentleman uh, was actually uh, responsible for uh, some of their event services uh, set up and uh, things like that. He did a lot of work with the jazz festival and things like that. And so I got invited to, to, as a pastor to speak to um, to the family and to his coworkers and friends uh, who were there. Uh, the university was gracious enough to host a memorial service. And as I was driving over, actually before, uh, as I was preparing for what I might say uh, in, in this event, it occurred to me that, um, that you know, this gentleman did a lot of work behind the scenes. And uh, I sort of had this image in my mind that as a, as a pastor, um, you know, I get to stand up on Sunday mornings and speak and present the gospel, but I do so on behalf of a, of a church that has, uh, has done a lot of work behind the scenes to get us to that point. And uh, so some of the things I shared were, uh, you know, as a, as a graduate of Southern Miss, I, I, I know that the ultimate goal for me was a diploma. Like I wanted to get an education and I realized that for many of the people, uh, in fact, everyone attending the university is a product of all of the employees. So no matter whether it's a teacher or an administrator or someone working in the physical plant, everyone who is employed by the university is working toward a common goal and that's to provide an education for the student. You know, everything we do here at the church, uh, all of our, our servants, our leaders, our volunteers, everyone is moving toward a centralized goal. And uh, what, I, what I realized in this moment was that there's no one's job that is more or less important than the other. Uh, I think that's biblical, and we're gonna talk about some of that here in just a moment. But when I think about service, uh, the one thing that comes to mind is that we're all playing on the same team and we're headed in the same direction, and everyone has a role, everyone has a task inside the kingdom of God, and no role is more important or less important than the other, but we're all called to work together toward a common good. Thank you, Ben, that's so important because uh, all of us have a role to play. And we think we might have a small role to play in the church or, uh, or a larger role. Uh, but the reality is we all have an important part to play in what the church is all about. And when I think of the role of the church, I think of God's overarching uh, purpose in Jesus was nothing less than, than the redemption of the world. God sent Jesus into the world for the sake of salvation. One of my favorite Bible verses, of course, is John 3.16, and we all know what that is, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But the verse after that, verse 17, I think is equally important because it points to what God had in mind. It says, for God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved. And at the heart of God's activity is the salvation, the redemption of the world. And that includes uh, you and I. That includes us today. God has in mind our redemption and the saving of the world and transforming lives, transforming the world uh, into something better, a masterpiece. We see this in uh, playing out in in letters in the New Testament. For instance, in 1 Corinthians, if you really wanna get a window into what the first century church was like, read the book of 1 Corinthians because you'll find in there um, all the good and the bad, but you'll see Paul, the author of 1 Corinthians, keep asking people to go back to what the purpose of the church is all about. And he names the redemption of the world in 1 Corinthians and Paul reiterates that we all have a part to play. I want to read parts of 1 Corinthians 12. This is where Paul starts talking about the role of every person 
in God's activity of redemption. And it's a beautiful thing when a whole church, when a whole people move in the same direction for the same purpose of God's redemptive activity in the world and to see ourselves as, as part of that, how God invites us to be part of the good that God is doing in the world. Here's what Paul says about serving and about our role. He says, there are a variety of services, but the same Lord, and there are a variety of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. And then Paul goes on to name certain gifts that, that the Spirit activates. And then he says, for just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we are all baptized into the one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we are all made to drink of the one spirit. He goes on to say that we can't say that one person is more important than the other. That would be like the our human body saying to our foot, hey foot, I don't need you. Or the foot might say, because I'm a foot, I don't really belong to the body. Uh, that would be that would be nonsense. He says, uh, picking up in verse 16, if the ear would say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were, were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each of them, as he chose. And then finally, it all comes down to this and Verse 27 of chapter 12, now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Each one of us has a role to play. Each of us has a part. Each of us has a place to serve. No matter what that looks like, we're all part of the body who are part of God's redemptive work in the world. And I think when we lose focus of that, when we forget our purpose as a church, we can get distracted by a lot of things and talk about many, many minor things. But what God calls us back to is serving him in his plan for the redemption of the world. One final scripture passage from 1 Peter chapter 4. He says this, like good stewards of the many graces of God, serve one another with whatever gift each of you has received. Whoever speaks must do so as one speaking the very words of God. Whoever serves must do so with the strength that God supplies so that God may be glorified in all things through Jesus Christ. In the end, that's why a life of service is so important for us because we're serving a God who is redeeming the world. And we get to have a part in that. Thanks be to God. Thanks, John. Uh, Jesus gives us such a very clear picture of what it means to, to serve. And um, for me, uh, the passage in John chapter 13 where Jesus gathers his disciples in an upper room and they share in those last moments before his crucifixion, um, he does something very strange by uh, taking the towel and the basin and he goes around and he begins to wash feet and uh, hopefully you remember that story. If not, check it out in John chapter 13. Um, it is in this situation where Jesus um, lowers himself, so to speak, and he begins to serve those who are his disciples. And I think there's this interesting image here in that the master is now serving the disciples, the students, if you will. And so Jesus does that, and there's the whole conversation with Peter where he rejects him, and, and yet Jesus says, I must do this so that you might have a part of what I'm doing. And of course, then Peter says, oh, well, wash every bit of me, and Jesus says, just let me wash your feet. But it's through this act of service that Jesus shows us what the kingdom of God looks like. And I want to read uh, toward the end of, of that conversation what Jesus says that I think, think is so pertinent to our conversation as it centers around discipleship and what it means to serve. Um, John tells us that after washing their feet, 
Jesus put on his robe again and he sat down and he asked the question, do you understand what I was doing? You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right because that's what I am. And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. And then he says this, I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. Jesus says, in washing your feet, I've given you an example to follow. You know, Jesus had been approached in many questions and concerns along the way, and he usually responded with something like a parable. And uh, But in this moment, he addresses very clearly. He said, I've given you a concrete example. This is how I want you to live life. I want you to do as I have done. I, the Lord and your, te your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet. Now, I want you to go and treat other people in the same way. He goes on to say, I tell you the truth, that slaves are no greater than their master, nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends the message. Verse 17, now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. Jesus says, I've given you this example to follow. Kind of going back to where we began, I'm, I'm, I, I am reminded every Sunday as a preacher, when I get to stand uh, at a pulpit or on stage and proclaim the good news of the gospel, that in doing so, I'm standing on the shoulders of many, many people who have served Jesus so incredibly faithful. I mean, from people who set up uh, at the well to people who are greeting people in the narthex or wherever, whatever people are doing, uh, when a pastor preacher gets up to proclaim the word of God, we stand on the shoulders of many people. And, and I want you to know personally, that if you're one of those people, that what you're doing is so incredibly significant. And it matters to God and it matters to the people we are attempting to reach. And you are serving them well. Uh, in fact, nothing I say has any, uh, you know, substance really if people do not connect with um, Jesus when they get out of the car and begin walking in the parking lot. And you're doing that and you're doing it well. And so I would encourage you to continue to serve, to continue to put the needs of others above your own, to continue to seek ways in which you can reach those who, uh, who need to be served in the name of Jesus. And so if you're not serving yet, and I'm not talking about just inside the church, that was just an example. We're all called to serve and we're called to serve far beyond the walls of our church. But I would encourage each and every one of you to follow the example in which Jesus has given, and that is to serve those around you. There are plenty of opportunities uh, just outside our back door, right in our neighborhood. Um, you don't have to go across the world to serve someone. There's opportunities right before us. And so I would encourage you to do that. And as I said earlier in the video, you know, there's no task that is more or less important than any other. The work that you do really does matter. And the difference that you can make by serving Jesus, by, in serving Jesus by serving others, you have no idea the possibilities that could change their life just because you have reached out to them in that way. Finally, I want to leave you with this one thought. And that is the very last line that Jesus says. He says, I've given you the example. I want you to do as I've done. The slaves are not greater than the master. Um, he says in the end, he says, now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. Which to me takes us all the way back to when we first began this journey of discipleship. What does it mean to be a growing disciple? When we first started the conversation, it was centered around not only knowing what Jesus taught or what Jesus did, but also in doing them, that we are called not only to hear from God, not just to be hearers of the word, but also doers of the word. And Jesus himself sort of wraps things up here. In fact, this is one of his final conversations with his disciples. And he says, I've taught you all these things. Now that you know this, God will bless you when you begin to live this out. He says, God will bless you for doing them. And I believe that for us, it's no different. That as we follow Jesus, it is incredibly important for us to spend time in the word, to spend time in prayer, to learn who Jesus is, to get to know him in a personal and intimate way, but also to then adjust our lives, to live our lives in such a way that we begin to put into practice the things that Jesus taught. Because now that we know these things, God will bless you for doing them.